The Meanest Doll in the World by Anne Martin and Laura Goodwin. Chapter 4 The Dolls at School. As Annabelle sat on the edge of the shelf and looked down to the floor, she decided that possibly this was the most afraid she had ever been. She was more afraid than when the captain, the Palmer's cat, had snatched Papa Doll and had run away with him. After that, the captain had been banished to the first floor of the house. She was more afraid than when she and Tiffany, during their hunt for Papa, had decided to search the captain's bed. And she was more afraid that when decades ago, Grandma Catherine, six years old, had painted Annabelle's hair green. Annabelle's hair was still green which Annabelle didn't mind. But she had been terribly concerned that green hair might be a cause for doll state. Apparently it wasn't, but one never knew. Come on, Annabelle, said Tiffany. She had already slid halfway down one of the straps of the backpack, and now her dangling feet hovered just an inch above Kate's coat. Let me help you. No, no, said Annabelle quickly. I can do it myself. And she did. Annabelle didn't give herself time to think about what she was doing. She didn't look down either. She fixed her eyes on the strap and she went hand over hand, worked her way to the end. You did it, cried Tiffany. Now let go, you'll land on the coat. Annabelle squeezed her eyes shut and let go. She felt the collar of Kate's coat beneath her feet. Good, said Tiffany. Now we just crawl down the coat. Here, you grab onto the buttons. And in no time, Tiffany and Annabelle had reached the bottom of Kate's coat. They were still almost a foot above the floor. Ready? Drop, said Tiffany, and she dropped, landing with a little thump. I can't drop, exclaimed Annabelle, finally looking down. I'll break when I land. Remember what happened to Papa when we were rescuing him and he had to jump to the floor? He broke his leg. Plus, how are we going to get back up later? Did you think of that? When Annabelle was scared, she felt cranky. Tiffany glanced around. She spied a scarf lying on the floor nearby. Okay, land on this. She dragged the scarf under Annabelle and heaped it into a little mountain. We can use it again later to climb up Kate's coat. If it's still here, Annabelle muttered. But she dropped and landed safely and then slithered to the floor. Tiffany looked at her hopefully. Okay, this is really great, admitted Annabelle. She looked all the way up the hall in one direction and all the way down in the other. School, Tiffany, can you believe it? Tiffany grinned. What should we do first? Let's find Kate's classroom, said Annabelle. Maybe we can hide somewhere and watch Kate and her friends and see what they do in school all day. Yeah, maybe we'll even learn something. Nanny would approve of that. There's so many doors, though, said Annabelle. One after another. They must be doors to classrooms, but how do we know which class is Kate's? Tiffany thought for a moment. We don't, she said, but we'll follow sound rules. Self. Annabelle hadn't thought about self in several months. She and Tiffany had formed self, the Society for Exploration and the Location of Missing Persons, shortly before Papa had disappeared in the jaws of the captain. Through self, they had found Papa. And then they had found Auntie Sarah in the attic when she had been trapped for so long. But after that, Annabelle and Tiffany hadn't had much use for self. Perfect, cried Annabelle. If ever a proper exploration were needed, now was it. We'll investigate each classroom as we come to it, said Tiffany. If we see Kate inside, we'll look for a hiding place. If we don't see her, we'll move on to the next room. And while we're in the hallway, we should stay close to the walls. There's plenty of boots and things to hide by if somebody comes by. Okay, said Tiffany. The nearest door was just a few feet away from where Annabelle and Tiffany had landed. They crept by shoes and boots and book bags and backpacks. When they reached the door, they peered around the corner. 
Wow, Annabelle started to say. But Tiffany poked her and held her finger to her lips. Through the years, as Annabelle had listened to bedtime stories, read to Kate and Annie and Catherine and Gertrude, she had heard lots of descriptions of classrooms. She expected to see a wooden desk for the teacher at the front of the room, a blackboard behind it, and 20 or 30 student desks arranged in neat rows. What she saw in this room was a teacher's desk, just as she had imagined, but the board behind it was green, and the desks for the students were grouped together in fours and fives to make tables. And all around the room were so many other things that Annabelle gasped as she tried to take them all in. Drawings, posters, charts, and maps on the wall, an aquarium full of fish, a cage labeled Ethel with a guinea pig inside a cage labeled Echo with a parakeet inside, a shelf of books, three beanbag chairs, displays and art projects, and a xylophone and plants and pots and board games and a jar full of pennies. Annabelle looked for so long at the things in the room that she almost forgot to look for Kate. And then she jumped a little when Tiffany pulled her back into the hallway and said, I didn't see her either. Um, I didn't either said Annabelle guiltily. And then she added, school looks like fun. Tiffany nodded. I feel sorry for Ethel though. I wonder how she lost her tail. I've never seen a kitten without a tail. Ethel is a guinea pig, Tiffany. That's a pig? Well, not like a pig on a farm. A guinea pig. Oh, never mind. I'll explain later. Come on. Annabelle and Tiffany scurried down the hall to the next door and peeked inside. This classroom looked very much like the last one, but the students in it were older. Kate was not among them, though. Okay, next room, said Tiffany. The girls ran ahead but came to a stop when the hallway suddenly widened. They saw a tall window on one side, a closed door on the other, and a large plaque on the wall that read, Friendship. Respect, trust, responsibility, kindness. We are proud of our school. What is this place? Asked Tiffany. I think it's a lobby, replied Annabelle. There's nowhere to hide here. But there's classrooms ahead. I can hear voices. What should we do? Annabelle felt brave. Run for it, she cried. The girls plunged through the lobby, relieved that the walls of coat hooks and shelves continued on the other side. They passed an open door with the words lost and found printed on it. Remember when Kate lost her sneakers and then she found them in the lost and found? Asked Annabelle. I guess this is where they were. Annabelle eyed the enormous wire bin that was brimming over with hats and jackets and shoes and books and toys. I don't know how anybody would find anything in there, though. It helps to be taller, said Tiffany. No one was in the hall, so the girls continued running until they came to a classroom door. They had barely peeked inside when Annabelle gasped, grasped Tiffany, and pulled her behind a pair of boots. What? exclaimed Tiffany. Nora, didn't you see her? She was playing right near the doors. This must be one of the kindergarten rooms. We don't want Nora to see us at school. I think we should go back through the lobby to the other part of the school. That's where the older kids are. Okay, but let's check out the rooms across the hall before we go back, just to make sure. All right. Annabelle and Tiffany were peeping into the other classrooms when Annabelle heard voices and footsteps in the hall. She looked over her shoulder. Two grown-up humans were just inches away. And this time, there were no convenient boots nearby. In a panic, Annabelle pushed Tiffany inside the classroom, and the girls scurried to the bottom of the shelf of a bookcase. A moment later, four feet stepped into the room. Wow, I never heard them coming, whispered Tiffany. Me neither. We have to be much more careful. Annabelle peered around the classroom. I'm pretty sure this is another kindergarten she said. 
The kids in this room looked about Nora's age, and there were no desks except for the teachers. Instead, at one end of the room were two long tables lined with small chairs. From other smaller tables scattered around the room hung signs that said, Our bean plants. How many is a hundred? Build your own city. Cooking time? And meet our goldfish. In one corner of the room was a mountain of locks, and not far from Annabelle and Tiffany were a wooden stove, a wooden sink, a box of dress up clothing, a dollhouse, and quite a few dolls, large and small. Tiffany, whispered Annabelle, you don't suppose those dolls are alive? Tiffany whispered back. Oh, I hope not. Most of the dolls were not properly dressed. One had been shoved headfirst into the sink, and a girl and a boy were playing with two others in a way that looked to Annabelle to be quite uncivilized. How are we going to get out of here? Annabelle asked. She turned her attention back to the adult feet nearby. As soon as the grown-ups leave, we'll leave too, said Tiffany. Okay. Annabelle crept between two books and settled in to watch the feet. She was about to tell Tiffany to hide with her when she heard a shout. Hey, hey, cried a girl. Look, Henry, I see a new doll. In a flash, a hand had reached for the shelf and whisked Tiffany into the air. Annabelle slid farther back between the books. She didn't let Tiffany out of sight, though. Jenna, can I play with it? asked Henry. It, thought Annabelle. No, I saw it. I want to play with it first. Then you can have a turn. As Annabelle watched, Jenna carried Tiffany to a small rocking chair and plopped down in it. She reached for a baby bonnet, and then as Jenna untied the ribbons of the bonnet, Annabelle saw Tiffany pinch Jenna's arm. Annabelle's eyes widened as Jenna dropped Tiffany and stared at her, but then shouted, Henry! Annabelle sighed and looked at the clock on the wall. 9.30. Doll State lasts 24 hours. Tiffany was going to be stuck here in Doll State until 9.30 the next morning. Should Annabelle stay with her? Should she try to go home by herself? From her spot on the floor, Tiffany gave Annabelle a teeny wave. She wasn't in doll state after all. Annabelle let out a great breath of air. All right, Tiffany was lucky, just plain lucky, but she had better be careful. For the rest of the morning, Annabelle watched as Henry pushed Tiffany across the floor on a plastic school bus, as two girls put Tiffany to bed in the dollhouse, as a boy tucked Tiffany in his pocket and read a book to her, and finally, as a girl with lots and lots of braids in her hair grabbed Tiffany and exclaimed, My dolly! All the while, Annabelle tried to think of something to do. At 11.20, a bell rang, and moments later, the children in the room were lining up at the door. Goodbye, said the teacher. Remember that tomorrow is show and share day. Annabelle had stood up again and moved to the front of the shelf again. She peered from between the books, and she saw that the girl with the braids still clutched Tiffany in her hand. Goodbye, Miss Eckert, said the girl. Goodbye, said Miss Eckert. And then she spied Tiffany. Sophie, you know that the toys have to stay in our classroom. Please leave the doll here. You can play with her tomorrow. Annabelle watched as Sophie ran to the dollhouse and tossed Tiffany inside and then joined the end of the line of kids and marched into the hallway. A minute later, the classroom was empty except for Mrs. Eckhart. Tiffany, lying on her back in the dollhouse, looked miles away from Annabelle. Mrs. Eckhart sat at her desk and wrote in a notebook. Annabelle wished that she would leave the classroom, but she did not. And after a few more minutes, another bell rang, and soon the room was full of the afternoon kindergartners. For the next several hours, Annabelle stayed in her hiding place and kept an eye on Tiffany. The afternoon kindergartners found her almost immediately and played with her as the morning kindergartners had. 
When the last bell of the day rang at 2.40, the children left the room and Mrs. Eckhart left with them. Annabelle waited until the room had been quiet for five full minutes. And then she approached Tiffany, who was sitting on a blanket on the floor by the dollhouse. For a moment, the girls stared at one another. Finally, Annabelle's dad. School's over. Kate has gone home by now. I know, replied Tiffany. Annabelle wanted to cry.